The patented power brace system, available exclusively from Foundation Support Works, is an excellent solution to stabilize cracked, bowing, and leaning basement walls. The entire installation takes place from the inside of the basement, requiring no outside excavation. The intent of this video is to describe the installation steps for a typical power brace installation. With any installation, remember to keep safety first. Personal safety is the responsibility of each and every person and should comply with OSHA standards. The installation of the power brace system varies depending on whether the floor joist and the basement ceiling run in the opposite direction or the same direction as the wall you will be installing the power braces on. Installations on walls where the floor joists run in the opposite direction or perpendicular to the wall are a little easier, so let's cover those first. To begin, lay out the locations where each power brace will be installed on the wall. Generally speaking, power braces can be installed about 3 feet from the corners and 5 to 6 feet apart on poured and concrete block walls. If the wall is badly damaged, spacings as close as 3 feet between power braces may be necessary. Measure and mark each location using a marker such as duct tape or another non-permanent marking tool. Make sure the power braces are lined up so they can be attached to a floor joist. If obstacles exist on the wall at the location where you'll be installing the power brace, try and remove them. If the obstacles are vertical on the wall and cannot be removed, such as a sink, toilet, or vertical pipe, try adjusting the location of the power brace a few inches to the side of the obstacle to avoid it while still maintaining a 5 to 6 foot spacing. If the obstacles are horizontal along the wall and cannot be removed, such as a horizontal plumbing line, the power brace can be furred out away from the wall by placing a 2x4 or 2x6 against the wall behind the power brace. At each power brace location, measure from the slab to about a half inch below the bottom of the subfloor above. Using either a portable bandsaw or a chop saw, cut the beam to this height. Set the beam in place, making sure the beam is tight against the bottom of the wall. It must stay tight against the bottom of the wall during the installation of the top bracket. Next, assemble the top bracket components. The top bracket components consist of a standard two-hole top bracket, a channel bracket, a tightening bolt, and nut. As you assemble these four items, make sure the nut is about a quarter of an inch away from the channel bracket. Carefully set the top bracket in place and use it as a template to mark on the floor joist where the hole locations will need to be drilled. Using a drill with a 13 16 inch bit, Drill holes through the floor joist at the marked locations, making sure to keep the drill bit at a 90 degree angle as you drill through the joist. Place the bolts through the bracket and joist and install the washer and nuts on the other side. Tighten the nuts and bolts into place using an impact wrench with a 1 and 1 8 inch socket and 1 and 1 8 inch wrench. Next, use a level to plumb the beam. Then, set the bottom bracket into place under the beam. Remember, the bottom of the beam needs to be tight against the bottom of the wall. Using a 3 quarter inch masonry drill bit, drill into the slab through a hole on one side of the bottom bracket. If you drill completely through the footing, place some urethane caulking into the hole to ensure water does not leak in through the hole. Install the concrete anchor in the drilled hole by hammering it tight against the bottom bracket. Drill through the hole on the other side of the bottom bracket and install the second concrete anchor using the same method. Tighten the nuts of the concrete anchors with an impact wrench and a 15 16 inch socket. Finally, tighten the top bracket of the power brace to the appropriate torque, which is 50 foot-pounds on most walls. If the floor joists run in the same direction or are parallel to the wall, a few additional installation steps will be required. Why? First, with joists running parallel to the wall, there will be nothing to bolt the top bracket to. And second, we'll need to add additional blocking between the floor joist to allow the force at the top of the power brace to be transferred through the floor system. Here's how we do it. Set an 8 foot long 2x8 across the bottom of the floor joist straight out from where the power brace will be installed. Using a marker or pen, mark the bottom of the joist on both sides of the 2x8 to use as a guide for where you will install blocking. Then measure the distance between each of the floor joists and use a chop saw to cut the blocking to the correct measurements. Be sure to notch out for any obstacles in between the floor joists, such as electrical or plumbing lines. Place the blocking in a staggered pattern between the floor joists within the marks you made for the 2x8. 
The blocking should fit very snug between the floor joists. Nail the blocking into place with 16 penny nails. If you aren't using a nail gun, screws can also be used to secure the blocking into place. Next, place the 8 foot long 2x8 back across the bottom of the floor joist and in between the markings you made earlier. Nail or screw the 2x8 into the floor joist and blocking using at least three nails in each piece of blocking and three nails in each joist. Now that the appropriate blocking is in place, we can begin to install the power brace. Measure the distance from the slab up to a half inch below the bottom of the 2x8 and cut the beam to this height. Continue to install the power brace as you typically would. Set the beam in place, make sure the beam is tight against the base of the wall, and assemble the top bracket components. Unlike an installation where joists run perpendicular to the wall and the top bracket is connected to the side of the floor joist, in this scenario, you will rotate the top bracket one quarter turn, or 90 degrees, and connect it to the 2x8. Mark the top bracket's hole locations onto the 2x8, drill the holes, and secure with nuts and bolts. Complete the installation by plumbing the beam, installing the bottom bracket, and tightening the system. Continue installing all other power braces using the same method. Whether the power brace system has been installed on a wall with joists running parallel or perpendicular, the final step is to place a branding label on each power brace with your company information and the installation date. Then take a look around and clean up your work area, trying to leave it better than you found it. FSI recommends that you leave a power brace tightening kit with each customer so they can continue to tighten the system and potentially straighten the wall over time. Show them how to use the torque wrench and explain appropriate tightening procedures. We are confident you'll find the power brace system easy to install, while homeowners will appreciate knowing their walls are once again safe and stable. If you have any questions about this video or other site-specific scenarios, contact your FSI support team at 800-281-8545.